Left London a few days ago for 21 days of cycling, trying to get in as many of the world's most famous cycling climbs, and obviously afterwards is a, is a pretty significant one. There's not too many places on the planet where you can just do so much epic riding. The Lassets de Mont Vernier, which is just extraordinary, like these crazy switchbacks like that. And then riding from there over Quad de Fer, which is amazingly beautiful and rolling, and Col de Calibier as well, which is another massive Tour de France hitter. My mission is to just to question what are the world's greatest height climbs and to show you ones which I think are even better than what you think are the world's best climbs. My name is Carolyn McCall. I'm an artist based in London and I'm Daniel's partner. Excitingly, I'm here joining him on this project of Epic Calls. It, it's another kind of Daniel's adventures that's opening up a whole new world for both of us. So I guess I'm here along, joining in that experience. And as a female rider, I want to be visible. I want to be part of it in many ways in terms of setting um, an experience for myself, but also for others. We have a great relationship in terms of partnership in, in cycling as a team. And I just want to encourage that and kind of celebrate that. My focus has kind of changed massively over the years where like in years gone by, I was like glued to my GPS, glued to power, glued to KOM. And actually putting a camera on my back has, has changed my life because it's like no longer am I looking at power and data. I'm actually looking up and getting to appreciate all this beauty. And to be able to cycle and photograph that is just like, you know, it, it's really special to me. So absolutely, I want to get the most extraordinary photographs I can possibly get here. We've arrived now in uh, Juez, which is just below the summit of Alpe d'Huez. The last few days we've been hitting up world famous climbs and here we are to do the, the big one, the big challenge of Alpe d'Huez. Super excited. Uh, now it's time just to get the bike, find a bit of preparation, some fresh oil, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, and yeah, it's game time. Just don't want any dirt basically on the chain and I'm gonna give, give the chain a clean and also the jockey wheels. And any dirt basically is gonna make, make the chain not, not run as smoothly, so you're not gonna pedal as efficiently uh, and also it's not gonna shift as efficiently as well. So all this dirt we want off for sure. I've got no excuses with this bike. It's a Shimano Durace Di2 hydraulic all over. Uh, I've gone for the Head Vanquish 4 with Panaracer tyres, so they're going to run super fast. Yeah, a bit like everyone who comes to Alpe d'Huez, you come here, you absolutely want to try and set your best time, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that too. I don't really care what anyone else thinks, really. It's more about me. I'm just like so internally competitive, so I just want to set my personal best um, tomorrow. And, and that's really where the nerves come from. It's almost like self-induced, I guess. You just got to enjoy this. Like we're in Alpe d'Huez, like in this beautiful background. You know, epic, world-class cycling. That's all done. So yeah, it's time to basically just get on a bike, go and cruise around the Eris, see what we can find, see some nice uh, roads over there as well. So yeah, there's pl plenty of riding here to be done. Compared to Daniel, my aim is always to enjoy it more. I think that's for sure. The suffering, I'm not afraid of to some extent, but then I just think it's really silly <laughs> to hurt yourself. When I am trying to really test those limits and, and better my cycling skills, then I think there's always something that's in the back of my mind being, you know, just enjoy this. This is, this is quite an experience in itself. Back in London, we've got a turbo and uh, we're using Zwift and on there, there's Alpe Zwift. I don't know how realistic it is, but anyways, we set our times on that. So I was uh, 49 minutes. And I was an hour and 18 minutes. I like to think that the scenery and kind of the view and the atmosphere kind of is, is for me, I think it's gonna be easier outside. The first few K definitely felt steeper than it did on a turbo. And, and for sure, the, the wind 
does play an effect in you. Like just psychologically, like. It's not just a cool breeze, it was yeah. a headwind. Yeah. <laughs> and like, going up a hill, it's very deceiving. On the turbo trainer, you don't really get any micro recoveries. And it's just not as dynamic. Like it's way more painful to ride or do an effort on a turbo trainer for an hour than it is to go and do it in real life. And also- You don't have these views. <laughs> you don't have these views. <laughs> Twenty-one switchbacks, eleven hundred meters of climbing, thirteen kilometers, average gradients, depending on how you do it, seven to seven to eight percent, and then ramps of over ten percent. Pretty consistent, and yeah, it's a beautiful climb. I've never done a time trial before, or I've never really tried to race up a mountain that is featured so highly and I know is quite difficult. The nervousness of that it carries in the very beginning. I am competitive. Um, there is only really one competitor out there and that's, that's myself. Um, it's me against the clock, watching those seconds tick away and trying to limit those number of seconds on, on this climb. I'm not going to enjoy this ride really. I'm, I'm not going to get to see the scenery. It's going to be eyes down, total focus. I'm going to need to see this video to actually see the climb, to actually relive the climb, because I, I probably won't remember any of it, apart from what my legs tell me at the end. Until you're tired, until you're broken, then you can start to rebuild and find you know, find the opportunity to be better, you know, and I think those are the things that with any challenge, you kind of, you, you set yourself up to be able to explore those experiences. If this is a privileged thing, if, if you, you know, this is my choice to be putting myself in this position, you kind of wonder your sanity and you kind of wonder, well, what are you doing it for if you just want it to be over? Once I start getting towards the top, or probably even further down, uh, my mechanism to try and get me through that suffering when your legs are absolutely screaming, you're hyperventilating, you're at max heart rate, is literally to count to 30. I'm gonna be staring at my front wheel, counting to 30 slowly, and just repeating it. One, two, three, four. Just having that kind of like micro distraction from the pain. I'm a performance artist, so in many ways, of course I'm going to try my hardest. Of course every moment I'm going to be um, thinking about making sure I'm giving it my best effort. It's all in the mind. It's just how much are you willing to suffer? How much are you willing to break yourself? I'm not just going to be using my legs. I'm going to be using my arms, my entire body. I'm just going to be like breaking myself to get over that line as quickly as possible. Previous max heart rate, 183. Max heart rate today, 194. I haven't been that high for a long time. And that was basically max heart rate and some the entire way. Hardest part, definitely the first third, because you're just suffering and you've still got a really long way to go. Disappointed that I didn't do the turbo time, but happy. That I know I'm not going to walk away going, I wish I hadn't held back because there was no holding back. That's a stupid finish. That's ugly. Pedal, pedal. Let's go. I got this. Oh, no. I'm just 
thinking to myself, what the hell is a time trial? And you're just worried about, like, am I cooking my insides? Like, are they really on fire? I think they are. This is not good for the body, is it? <laughs> and that wind, it, you kind of have to trick your head to think it feels nice because it's so hot and it's a nice breeze, but man, it makes you feel like you're snail. Riding where, you know, Tour de France, you know, literally has been won on this mountain. There's such heritage here. Uh, that for me was very special to ride in, in the kind of the footsteps of absolute legends. For me, it's the exploration. All of these climbs I've read in magazines and books, and we're now getting to go and experience and explore those climbs ourselves. You know, we're very lucky to be here in such incredible weather and to be able to share that is a privilege. So Epic Coles is, is a lifelong journey. It's something just so happy to, to have and so passionate about. You know, this, this is a dream for me. I do have to say a massive thank you to Shimano. We wouldn't be here without them. Definitely not gonna be in Europe for too much longer. We're gonna go out to the back and beyond of Chile northern Norway, all over the world basically, to go and scout out climbs. My mission is basically to, to go out there and just, just find just epically beautiful and hard climbs to, to go and ride as well. Yeah, it's going to be fun.